Thank you for turning to 10, your news leader. 10 News Conference with Gene Valicenti continues right now. We should always prepare for a worst case scenario. You, you don't make believe it, it couldn't happen. So if they've been through the academy and are qualified to patrol in every city in this, this state, city and town in the state, why can't they patrol at Rick? Well, that was from last year. The last time that, that Jack Warner, the new president of Rhode Island College, was in with us. He was the interim president at that time. President Warner, thanks for coming back. Nice to see you again. Thank, thank you, Gene. We've got to catch up. The invitation. You know, that's yes. the issue of whether or not you want to arm your campus police. Why don't we do that off the top? Where do we stand with that? Last time you were in, you were kind of, well, you, uh, you were going back and forth with me on that. Where, where do we stand? It's still under consideration. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot to do uh, to get ready for that. Uh, officers need to qualify. Uh, uh, so they, a lot of discussion and debate. Uh, there's a cost associated with it. Um, we're very pleased that our campus police are fully accredited nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, very few campus police operations are. So we're pleased about that. We think we have uh, a very safe campus. Of course, you know, nobody can account for, yep. you know, the bad things that happen out there. But uh, we also have good relationships with the Providence and North Providence police uh, in terms of response time. Right. So, uh, so we're still, it's still under consideration, but yeah. we haven't made a final decision yet. Well, you're an urban campus. Now, just from what I recall the last time I talked to you about this, it sounds like you're a little more amenable to pushing this forward. Is this going to happen on your campus? Do you yeah. support it personally? Well, <laughs> I'm still a bit ambivalent about it. Um, the, there are concerns by many on my campus about uh, arming the campus police, but I'm also mindful that uh, we want to be as safe as we can. And it's a it's a very difficult environment out there, so uh, so we're still considering it. Uh, no guarantees, but. Uh, uh, you know, we want to study the issue as, as carefully as we can. Well, you've been studying it for a while. Listen, Brown allows it. Uh, I don't think you'll get a more liberal campus than Brown. So, so what is it? What's the trepidation? What, what are you getting pushed back from certain groups? What is it? Uh, so yeah, there are certain groups that are reluctant to see uh, police officers armed. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we know that a lot of training is involved. Not mm -hmm. every police officer uh, could qualify for being armed, too. Yeah. There's a whole process that they have to go through. So, so then the question becomes, can we have armed officers on every shift mm -hmm. when, uh, when we don't have a large force. Yeah. And if, uh, if a number of them can't qualify uh, for it, mm -hmm. then, um, then we would have to staff it up differently. And right. it's also very difficult to get uh, campus police these days. Well, uh, uh, listen, there's a lot of police officers who have done time in departments. They're looking for something a little different. They come over and they work for you. To me, it's a no-brainer, but I, I'm not in your position. And I really sympathize <laughs> with a college president. You know, yeah. I had the President Brown in once. I said, I wouldn't want your job. I don't care how much it pays. You have to fight with everybody. Yeah. There's not a thing you can do, it appears, without fighting with a constituency on campus. Do you? Has it always been like this? Because uh, you were telling me where you went to school at BC years ago when it wasn't like this when I went to school. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to a certain extent, kids are always vocal and, and, you know, have a certain point of view. But to me, it seems that there's not a thing that you or any other pre college president can propose without a fight. Well, I think the fight could be strong. I mean, we constantly negotiate with different groups to get things uh, uh, through. Uh, particularly if you want to modify your curriculum, and we need to do that. We need to be able to get students through our institution in four years. Mm -hmm. uh, we struggle to do that, or have struggled in the past. So we have proposals that we are constantly negotiating with faculty about. Uh, but I wouldn't call those fights. I think we, it's, it's very important to me that we have a campus climate that manages our disagreements in an agreeable way. Well, uh, we don't have to come to loggerheads over matters. So, uh, so we've put it out there that you know, we want to be the kind of campus where the disagreements can be managed, yeah. uh, where people don't have to get to a protest stage or, or angry shouting, any of that. that uh, so that's part of managing the campus culture right. in a positive way. Uh, well, speaking of protest, you know, other schools have been rocked by uh, pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel protest. Harvard took a beating, MIT, you know, the president's mm -hmm. uh, 
how to, how to step down in certain instances there. You pen. Uh, you've sort of avoided that. Am I correct? Have you had a yeah, smaller yeah. gatherings at all? Or for uh, In large part, you've avoided that. We have. We have had gatherings. Uh, we have an active uh, Palestinian group on campus. Uh, but their function has been to educate people about mm -hmm. uh, the Palestinian plight and uh, what that represents. Uh, it hasn't come to uh, chanting or organized protests or, or, or trying to bind me as president into making a, a public statement. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I, I don't have a foreign relations pedigree, so, uh, so I've stayed silent on the matter and yeah. I haven't been under any pressure to, uh, to take a stand. Well, and, where, where did this all come about? The, the demanding colleges, college presidents, college administrations take take points of view on on very divisive political subjects, and uh, I don't think it's worked for Harvard. I don't think it's worked for <laughs> MIT or the University of Pennsylvania, or on and on and on. Where did this come from? And do you talk to other your, your colleagues about this? Your peers? Uh, abs absolutely, it's a it's a topic. Um, I. I tend to fall on the side of not commenting on areas that I don't have expertise in. I'm, I'm an educator. Mm -hmm. I have e expertise in that. Uh, so I, I try to avoid those kinds of things. But then again, my campus is not as activist as, as yeah. other places are. But if you know, if I, I went to school in the Vietnam era. Yeah. And uh, campuses were called upon all the time to take positions on the Vietnam War. Uh, a lot of anti-war protests occurred on, on campus, yep. particularly when the draft was put into place. So th there's a long-standing tradition of, uh, of activism on social issues, yes. on uh, military issues, any, any number of things like that. And uh, uh, what I like to do is provide a forum for both sides of an issue to play out, mm -hmm. but again, in an amicable yeah. kind of way. No, you're right to bring that up. The Vietnam era was certainly mm -hmm. very divisive. My framework yeah. is the early 80s, 81, yeah. 82, 83, a different time. We didn't yeah. have this, to my recollection, where I went to school. And I went to a commuter school, much like your school is a commuter mm -hmm. school. So it's sort of not quite apples and oranges, but it's different than MIT or Harvard yeah. or Yale, correct? Yeah, yeah. Our, our students are, are juggling uh, half of our students are Pell Grant recipients, mm -hmm. uh, which is another whole topic yeah, these we'll get days. To that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, half of them are Pell Grant recipients. They work, and they work long hours many times, uh, sometimes too many hours, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it hopefully doesn't get in the way of their progress. But they're busy. They're busy trying to get an education to improve their lives, uh, transform their lives, uh, which we can give them. Uh, so they're not as actively involved in the social issues as some other places. Uh, understandable, they, they drive to your campus, they look for a parking space, they go to school, they mm -hmm. drive home. Right. Most of them do. Uh, let's talk about tuition, let's talk about sure. that Pell Grant. Uh, you, were, you, you were successful in getting the state to come up with more cash, talk about that. Well, we're very pleased uh, about the HOPE scholarship. Yeah. So, so think of it, uh, we can offer a bachelor's degree for $22,000 in tuition and fees, the whole degree. Four uh, years. Four years. All done. If you qualify for right. it. But, you know, and that's why it's been more important than ever for us to make sure that students stay on track. Uh, we're already seeing uh, an impact of that. So uh, our <clears throat> credit load uh, per student is up right. considerably because they're taking the 15, 16 credits they need each semester to stay on track. Uh, we have what we call credit recovery for them too. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they have to drop a course because uh, they're juggling work and family, right. uh, then uh, we've doubled our early spring offerings between the fall and spring semesters. Yep. And, uh, and we're doubling our, our summer school enrollment as well so that they can recover the credits and stay on track right. uh, for the HOPE scholarship. Just want to make sure you understand the CCRI was the first one, right. free at CCRI. Uh, Rick, for your school, it is broken up. Last two years, what is it? How does it work? Yeah, it's the last two years. Right. So, so if you uh, if you earn 60 credits yep. at the end of your sophomore year with a 2.5 grade point average, uh, then you'll qualify and be on track to graduate in four years. You'll qualify for the scholarship, and so the second two years will be free. Yeah. Uh, so, and it's what, what's called last dollar, just like promise at CCRI. Uh, you, you, if you have your Pell Grants and other scholarships, uh, we'll plug the gap uh, be, that exists between those 
scholarship amounts and the full tuition and fee bill. We've got about uh, two minutes left. Uh, so all in, four-year degree, 22000 22000 Now yeah. the taxpayer is picking up the balance of that. Correct. Correct? Yes. Okay, so it could be yeah. 22000 out of pocket depending on your income. Yeah. It could be less than that. It could be, yeah. yes. Um, that's an investment on the part of the yeah. taxpayers because it's widely known that communities with higher levels of educational attainment are better off than communities with yeah. lower levels. Um, they pay more taxes. So there's a return, a direct return on investment for the wage premiums that our graduates get when they graduate. Let's talk about return. Uh, even at 22,000, some of these majors, oh, I don't know, anthropology, I don't even know if you offer anthropology. Uh, we do. An English degree, oh, okay. Uh, anthropology, even for 22,000, what is a kid going to do with that? Versus your new program of uh, computer science, security, uh, cybersecurity, Jim Langevin's program, that could be a bargain at 22000 So just square those two. Well, uh, we're very pleased about our cybersecurity program. Uh, we approved it last June, and by fall we had uh, 35 majors. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another 135 uh, applicants who are interested in cybersecurity for this coming fall. Yep. So we see that as a real growth area. The payoff is tremendous, uh, six-figure jobs at the end of yep. the, uh, the rainbow there. Uh, but our nurses also do well, yes. our social workers do well, our, our teachers uh, have ample opportunities for employment, uh, not as high a, a paid no. profession as we know, but uh, they do well as, as well. And if you look at a field like anthropology or other arts and sciences, uh, they don't do as well immediately, but you go get a job at a company and you're well educated and you have skills associated with that education, you start mm -hmm. getting promoted. So, by mid-career, those students are doing quite well. Yeah. But most of the analysis takes place within a year or two of graduation. So it takes some fields longer to ramp up uh, than others. Uh, you were what major undergrad? I was a psychology major. Psychology major. And so <laughs> here's what you can do with a psychology good for, major. Good for your, good for you your can, position. Yeah, you can be a college president. Right, all right. Well, listen, thanks <laughs> so, for coming in, and thanks. thanks for catching up on a couple of issues. We didn't talk about everything involving Rick, but got to scrape the surface. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Gene.